How's it going everybody? It is Ethan or Unknown Coder and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we're starting a whole new series. I've been really itching to build something just straight up in front of you guys so it's a little bit more straightforward and a lot easier to produce video wise because the devlog has a lot of complicated things going on that I kind of had to test and play around with. I'd rather build something that I can just sit down, talk to you guys, tell you what I'm building, so on and so forth. So this series is going to be a little bit different than the previous coding series that I've done in the sense that I'm actually going to plan it out this time and it's going to be more me just sitting down coding in front of you and telling you about what I'm doing and why I'm doing different things. So instead of me just doing a coding time lapse, I'm going to be actually typing in front of you, probably making a ton of mistakes because that's just how I am and just telling you why I'm doing it and my thought process behind that design. So before we actually get into the videos, I do have a couple of disclaimers for you guys. So first off, I do want to point out that this is not a tutorial. In fact, as I've been developing this application, I've actually been learning myself a lot. So that's also why it's been a ton of fun and of course the reason why i'm saying that this is not a tutorial is because i actually train people day to day to become software engineers and developers and i don't want anything to be kind of like a conflict interest. So I just want to make sure that there's no company material assets that I'm using in this production and I'm primarily just using my own knowledge slash things I have learned but I'm not using any material and I'm not trying to train you guys or teach you guys anything. My goal here is just to build a really cool product for my YouTube viewers. Next I wanted to say that building this application is solely for myself to learn more, increase my understanding of technologies and things like that. I'm not planning on uh, monetizing the product I'm producing or anything like that and that's primarily because obviously this is a big mainstream product and if I try to copy it and try to monetize it things to go wrong so again this is more just for me to have fun me to build and me to kind of um, reverse engineer some things so again not trying to monetize this product or anything like that let's go ahead and move on in the video here so what are we actually building so as you guys have already seen by the title and the thumbnail of this video we are going to be recreating twitter i've always been fascinated with developing little social media applications for fun also for teaching is kind of like my go-to thing because it's pretty simple to put together it has a lot of connections uh, one to many relationships main to main relationships so on and so forth the problem is that i've never actually been able to develop the full scale application that i've wanted to from front end to back end to the database to everything so now i'm going to sit down and actually take the opportunity and build it out in front of so essentially what I'm going to be doing is designing an application that acts and feels like Twitter. However, I will be putting my own spin on some things, some functionalities, and actually improving on some things that I don't like about Twitter. And you'll see that later on. It also must be said that no one except for Twitter employees really know how Twitter is implemented and how things are going on over there. So at this point, we're essentially just trying to emulate the functionality that the Twitter employees have already achieved. And obviously, we're never going to be able to reach the power, the algorithms, the data, and all of that stuff that they created so essentially we're just kind of reverse engineering creating an application that looks and feels like twitter but it's obviously not going to act exactly how twitter will be doing one final thing is that my plan is to be developing this application in little bite-sized videos so essentially we are going to be focused on one small part of the application at a time in each application and we're going to break those up into small little videos because youtube likes smaller more engaging videos so if i just focus on small videos uh, that go out quickly we should be able to hopefully peek the interest of YouTube and you guys as well. My hopes are to at least upload this twice a week. Some weeks I may upload this three times depending on whether or not I have a Minecraft or devlog video to go along with it. Now the great thing about this this type of video series is that it doesn't have the production behind it like my devlog videos. So I can sit down and just develop for a couple of hours each day and hopefully make three, four, five videos out of it and make like maybe five to 10 to 15 minute videos that are small and bite sized so you guys can digest a lot better. So now what are we going to be using to build this Twitter clone? I know that developing a Twitter clone has been actually done before. Actually, it's been done by quite a few people. However, from what I've seen most of the time, it's always been like a Mern stack or a mean stack where they use Node.js as a backend, external libraries, cloud providers, and a lot of stuff to do the heavy lifting on the backend. Quite frankly, this is not the greatest view of what it's actually like to work at an enterprise level company. Most of the big name companies that are developing applications are doing so in Java, C Sharp, or C++, or any other high level language that's not JavaScript or Node.js. And typically, it's only going to be those newer startups that are using Node.js in Google Firebase or whatever other cloud backend technologies that they're using in these development channels to quickly develop 
develop these backends and only focus on the front end. The real domain of the workforce is still heavily Java or C Sharp, SQL type databases, and either Angular or React with TypeScript. And I'll be honest with you guys, many enterprise level companies are actually using Angular still, but I like React more, so that's what I'm going to be using instead. So of course, let's get into the actual technologies we're using after I went over why I'm using those technologies. Of course, we'll be using Java because that is the, the technology or the backend language that I know the best. We're also going to be using Spring Boot to help set up our application faster, manage our dependencies between classes, set up and run our embedded server, and map our server endpoints for our API. I. We're also going to be making use of Spring Security to actually allow us to encode our user credentials and authorize use of different endpoints. We'll get into that more later. And Spring Security is one of those things that I've been really playing around with and teaching myself because I haven't actually had the time to do so. We're also going to make use of Spring Data JPA. This will help manage our database connections as well as act as an ORM for us. Of course, if you guys have used Spring Data JPA, you know that it does a lot of heavy lifting for us. Of course, we'll also be using Spring Web because that is going to be how we actually do our end Point. Like I said previously, we are going to be using PostgreSQL database for our applications. We could set up an instance like an AWS, but eventually free tier always runs out. I don't want to pay for it. And if you guys are trying to follow along, whatever, I don't want you guys to pay for an AWS RDS instance either. And again, while MongoDB is cool, the real world is actually dominated with MySQL and Postgres. So I want to stick more closely to what we see in enterprise clients. Something else that I want to throw in here is that we're also going to be using a Google API to help us send emails because if you guys have ever signed up for Twitter you know that one of the steps is to actually you know that one of the steps is to send an email to verify uh, your account and so on so we are going to be making use of a Google API and again that is something that I got to teach myself so that was also very fun finally for the front end we're going to be using my beloved react with TypeScript again at this point majority of your large names will probably likely be using angular but there are some that are starting to transition over to react or are using react However, almost every single enterprise development firm or enterprise development company are going to be using TypeScript with it as well. We'll also be taking advantage of Redux to manage the state of our application once we get that far. Other than that, I'm not going to be using any fancy CSS libraries or NPM packages. I plan to design the functionality of the front end all myself and the design of the front end all myself, kind of just basing it off of the look of Twitter. And this is also going to be borrowing any mature UI logos or, or mature UI icons because I don't want to sit down and design design those, I'm just going to use those for ease of use. Now, our development environment, I'm sure I'm going to get a little bit of flack about this, but it is what it is. For my spring development and Java development, I prefer to use Eclipse Enterprise Edition. I do know that IntelliJ does have really good IntelliSense, but I don't like the fact that you have to pay to be able to create spring projects inside of the editor. Um, Enterprise Eclipse with an STS plugin really makes it easy to do microservices and things of that sort. And please be sure if you're going to develop with Eclipse Enterprise Edition, just download the STS plugin. This is going to be the STS uh, version three, or if you don't know what STS is, Spring Tool Suite version three. Um, it's the least buggy out of them. Once you move up to Spring Tool Suite four, it becomes a completely buggy mess. I've seen things where caching issues and other things like that. So just be careful with STS. We're going to be using Postman, of course. This is kind of like industry standard at this point to test our endpoints. We're going to be using DBeaver. This is just a database connection manager. Uh, we'll be using the community edition because it's free. It allows us to connect to our Postgres database and get a view of it and everything. Uh, it's just kind of what I have on hand and what I know to use. You guys can use whatever you like. And finally, of course, with Developer React, we're going to be using VS Code. This is essentially the pinnacle of front-end development at this point. We also are going to have like things like Emmet, Prettier, and ES7 snippets to help us along the way. So that is essentially going to be our entire development environment and our technologies. And finally, my end goal for this series is to have a completely working full stack application that looks and operates like Twitter. Obviously, we're not going to have the user base. We're not going to have all the functionality, but it will. But my main goal is to capture all the main points that it will be able to. With that being said, I want to welcome you all with this journey with me. If you have any suggestions for I should build next, feel free to leave them in the comments. Again, these videos are going to probably be pre-recorded for the most part, but that doesn't mean I can't go through and take some suggestions and do some refactoring later on. But with that being said, I want to thank you all for watching episode zero. Please tune in for episode one, where we're going to start getting getting into our Java and Spring stuff. If you like this video, if you want to see more, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, hit the bell icon below. That way you don't miss any videos. This has been Ethan on Encoder. I'll see you guys in episode one. Peace out. Have a great day and see you guys later.